Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel. We're in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. And now for my second guest tonight, I'm going to be talking with Tamara Yates. She is the Director of Development and Communications at L'Arche Portland. Thanks for being here, Tamara. My pleasure. It's great to have you here. And I, I heard about L'Arche Portland from, um, from a, a friend who is involved with L'Arche. And, um, didn't know a darn thing about it, mm. and but I was doing a little bit of research, and it's it's really uh, fascinating, and it's a different approach to um, dealing with our community. Mm -hmm. And maybe you could tell us a little bit about the um, the history and the mission of Large Portland. Sure. Well, it started 50 years ago this year, um, which amazes me that I've never that I don't know about it till now. It's true. It's a uh, the best kept secret in Portland. Yeah. Um, but uh, our founder, whose name is Jean Vanier, mm -hmm. he actually founded the first L'Arche community in France in 1964. He had been um, teaching philosophy in Toronto and um, got a call from a mentor in Paris and said, who said, come over and visit some asylums with me. Mm. And when he did, he was really quite moved by um, just the pain and suffering that he saw in the men in those asylums. And he realized right away that that was from, not really from being intellectually disabled, but from being institutionalized, being, institutionalized, yeah, being abandoned, yeah. being isolated. So he had this really radical response of inviting two of the men to leave the institution and move in with him in a house that he bought right there. Wow. And this is in France? Then. In France, okay. just outside of Paris, about two hours. So after three months, he asked them, would you like to live with me for the rest of your lives? And they both said yes. Wow. And he really did just that. And so from there, this sort well, of blossomed. He started writing letters and people heard about it. He didn't mean to start a movement, but <laughs> people were so inspired by what he was doing and actually by the transformation that he himself was also experiencing mm, by living I with these imagine. men, that they started communities next one started in Canada and the third one was in Calcutta wow. India so this is an international it organization. is actually yes so how many different countries do you know a hundred and well there's 147 communities in 35 countries wow. worldwide wow that's impressive so tell me what is it that he did in this I mean he lived with these these two gentlemen mm -hmm. it's but really what what what, well, is, what is the bottom line? What is, what is, what it's ultimately about mutual relationships. It's really about opening uh, one's heart to receive the gifts of people with intellectual disabilities. It's a place, L'Arche is a place where people without intellectual disabilities can enter into really ongoing friendships with people with intellectual disabilities. So is it about having like, mutual respect and trust with each other no matter where you're coming from or what place you are in life? Is that kind of...? Yes. Uh, it's really um, oh. ultimately about the power of vulnerability and how people with intellectual disabilities have these gifts of welcome and wonderment, spontaneity and mm -hmm. directness. They um, don't have the luxury of wearing the masks that you and I put on every day. Which are not always uh, a good thing. <laughs> no, no. So they have the power to open us to um, lead more authentic lives and to also come more fully into the present moment. Um, so so it's, it's not, it's, it's not, it's a two-way street, totally. It's absolutely yeah. a two-way street. In fact, so L'Arche Portland has a very similar history of people that got inspired by people with intellectual disabilities and wanted to create a community where they could share their gifts. And um, it started in 1987 here in Portland. And I actually lived in one of our homes for two years and uh, got to live with four of our um, core members. That's what we call the adults with disabilities in our homes because they're at the core of the community. Right, that makes sense. So, so there were four core members, and then how many other people were living there? You and at the house, there were myself and three other people. So, is it pretty much a one-to-one -one ratio normally? Uh, is that it is, um, although with scheduling and things like that, it's not always twenty-four-seven yeah, yeah. like that. But mm -hmm. but it's not as if somebody is assigned to somebody as their their special buddy or anything. Or well, we do does have that kind of ha happen do, that way? But but everyone shares yeah. in the care and um, the interactions and the engagements um, with everybody. Kind of sounds like everyone is celebrating whatever they have to bring to that's right to life or to their community. That's right. We don't see some people as receiving gifts and some people as giving them. We see everybody as bringing their gifts and their challenges and and the community working together to. That's share a great. Those. That's a great um, 
way to think about about just the community at large that everybody does have something to bring it because I, I truly believe that's that's Absolutely. the case um, so when, when you're living there are there what do you do are do you when you were staying there for two years did you work a job outside where mm -hmm. you stay there that yeah. was that was your, your that was my full-time focus yeah. mm -hmm. so we have um, live in uh, what we call them are assistants mm -hmm. who um, make a commitment of a year at least and, and have, have availability for two years. And they share life in the homes and it's, a, it's kind of like a family really. We get up in the morning, uh, we have breakfast together and then our core members usually get the TriMet lift and go off to um, vocational programs. Oh, yeah, okay. And then they come back at different times in the afternoon and there's doctor's appointments and outings and exercise and- All the um, things that everybody else does, but yeah. Everything we all do. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, dinner at 5.30 usually where the whole community eats together. Um, and then after dinner we have a really simple prayer time together where everybody gets to share a rose, a thorn, and a bud, something that was good about your day, yeah. something challenging, and something you're looking forward to. Oh, that's great, I love that. Mm. Now, I think you brought a, a slideshow of, of that'll kind of give us an idea of what, what it looks like in, you know, in a large, um, do you call it a home, or you a call large it a community? A community, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay the, can you maybe go through these and tell us what we're looking Absolutely. at Absolutely, so this is Robin Dow on the left, and Melissa, who used to live at one of our homes, that she lives in Montana now, but um, it's people with and without intellectual disabilities sharing life together. That's really what L'Arche is about. Um, they look like they're, they're having fun. <laughs> they, they are indeed. This is our founder, Jean Vanier. The belief in the inner beauty of each and every human being is at the heart of L'Arche and at the heart of being human. There's a picture from the early days in 1964 with Vanier and several of the people that were living there. Lots of people jumped in and helped. And very quickly, it became an international interfaith movement. There's um, Vanier with Mother, Mother Teresa. Teresa yes. mm -hmm. um, so now there's 147 large communities in 35 countries around the world. That's the answer to my question. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. It's pretty exciting. I've been to the International General Assembly, and there were people from 36 countries. I bet um, that was amazing. It was amazing. Where was, it was that? So incredible. The the, it was in Atlanta um, oh, okay. two years ago. Wow. People walking around in pairs. Oh, Here's some God. pictures from our early days. That's Dorothy Coughlin there. She's our I founder. Dorothy Coughlin. She's lovely, <laughs> yes, the uh, from the Archdiocese. In 1995, we opened our second home, which we call Niakani. It's not in Niakani, it's in Montevilla. Oh, okay. um, and the Halem is our first home name. Then we've had hundreds of people come and share life inside and outside our homes. On the left there's Rodney and Ben. That was our early logo. We have a different logo now with the L'Arche boat, which is an international thing. And here's another Vanier quote. I am struck by how sharing our weakness and difficulties is more nourishing to others than sharing our qualities and successes. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure, that's true. So at the bottom of everything, kind of the baseline, are, we exist to transform the lives of adults with intellectual disabilities. And there's Joni, a founding member, Cindy, Rodney, Adam, Robin, Ben, Aaron, and Marilyn. Those are the eight core members. But L'Arche also exists to transform the lives of the young leaders and committed members who assist them. So these are pictures of our core members with assistants who have lived in our homes, as well as um, extended community members, board members. Uh, there's Ali, there's Rebecca. She came from Germany for a year, and Ben. And lastly, Large Portland exists to transform society as a whole by revealing the possibility of a world where everyone belongs. So Large is really about so much more than the eight core members who live mm -hmm. in our homes or even the hundreds of assistants who have come through our doors um, since 1987. We really want to communicate to the society as a whole the gifts of people with intellectual disabilities and invite people without disabilities into ongoing friendships with them. To love someone is to show them their beauty, their worth, and their importance. There's another picture of Vanier. That's really beautiful, it is. So these are some ways people can jump in if they wanna help or, or volunteer. You can volunteer in the homes by cooking dinner we always need help with gardening and stuff. 
We have uh, monthly prayer nights and Teze services. You can sign up for our e-news and newsletter, become a monthly donor. We have home tours on the third Thursday of every month. Um, and then we also have a Christmas tree sale that's okay. happening right now. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Let me see. We have a picture oh, look of Adam <laughs> hugging Santa. That's great. And I think that's the end. So there's, so there's a lot of ways to become involved. Indeed. Yeah. Plenty. I mean, you can make a donation, but you can also physically get in there. So you don't... As you don't have to commit to a year or two years no. to be part of it. You can actually help by becoming, a, what did you call it, an extended member? Extended community yeah, member. Yeah, mm -hmm. We also it. have associate members who can't live in our home, homes but choose to live out the values of L'Arche in their oh. own lives. And part of that involves um, being in a committed friendship with a person who's differently abled. So you have then, different levels that people can commit to because not everybody can, you know, say, dive I'm in. Give, yeah. yeah. Mm -mm. But if you just kind of want to stick a toe in to get a feel for it, maybe start out as, you know, helping out in one of those ways and Absolutely. then go from there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so the, the Christmas tree sale, tell me about that. It's, this, is, um, this is going on now, you said? It is. Through it's December 21st. Fifth annual wow. Christmas tree sale. It's been happening since just two years after we opened as a community. Wow. And is um, this a major fundraiser it for is you? It's a major fundraiser. It's one of our two major fundraisers. We have to fundraise forty percent of our annual budget mm. every year. And the rest comes from state funding. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Through SSI payments. Oh, okay. But our Christmas tree sale is going on now. We have two lots, one in Hollywood at the grocery store outlet parking grocery lot. Outlet. That's that um, Northeast 44th and Hancock. Mm -hmm. And then in Southeast at um, 82nd and Burnside. It used to be Safeway and now oh, it's yeah. Hung Fat. Yes, I know. We have a lot there. So it's Across a from great the Walgreens way. and the Burgerville. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's a great way to support a, our community and, um, and also get a beautiful tree because our trees are locally grown and freshly cut. Nice. We have nobles, Nordmans. Um, this is the first year I heard of a Nordman. My daughter got a Nordman really and I, beautiful. she said they're perfect. And I oh, they're lovely. And we have those Grands were. also and Doug Furs. We also have little tabletops if you don't uh, have room oh, really? for a big one. That might be mm -hmm. <laughs> perfect for me. Uh -huh. And so that's going through the 21st. That's right. And okay. the hours are on our website, okay. um, www.larche-portland.org. Okay. And do you need help at your We at do. Your tree sale it's too? mostly volunteer run. Okay. And so there's lots of opportunities to volunteer. You can do a three hour shift. It's tons of fun. Yeah, I think it would be. Um, it would be really fun. fun. I've volunteered every year that I can, which is, I think, every year so far since I've wow, been there. Wow, really? And um, it's just a blast. People are always, always in such a good mood when they're buying a Christmas tree and they love, you know, to have help picking them out right. and stuff like that. Oh, that's great. Now, um, before we run out of time here, if, if people want more information, obviously, obviously they can go to the website and there's different ways to get involved. But um, what if we want to check out the, the, some of the homes themselves? You said this, mm -hmm. Neakani and um, Nehalem. Nehalem. Mm -hmm. Is so that something we have that we could, a, people mm -hmm. can do? There's a home tour every third Thursday. Okay. And that is also on our website under the events. It's um, Get Involved, I think, is the heading. Okay. And then you go down to there, it says Come to an Event. And that'll have the dates and a contact email to RSVP. Good. So they alternate the homes. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a lot of ways to get involved if Absolutely. you want to. I think when more people find out what the whole the whole mission, no, I don't know if mission is right, but, but yeah, mission, what the mission of your organization mm -hmm. is about. Um, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I think, you it's know. really lovely to encounter um, adults with intellectual disabilities shining and being able to share their light. And they're really powerful individuals. What's, what's the most important thing you've gotten out of your work with this group? Well, Marilyn Petrozelli has been a, such an inspiration to me. And one of the things that I learned from living around her is that it's okay to be anxious some of the time. And it's also okay to just say how I'm feeling um, whenever mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling it. And she is so inspiring how she gets out in the community and really wants to help. And she's one many of the people. core members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a picture of her right here. She's actually hugging um, Aaron, who's another core member I live so this with. Is Marilyn's right here and Aaron is here. And Aaron also inspires me with her joy. She loves to dance. Oh, um, really? And uh -huh, she dances all the time. Uh, and is filled and with probably joy. very. Um, 
a, with great abandon. And yes, effusive. Um, I love she it. loves to dance and listen to the Beach Boys. Oh, is that um, right? Marilyn volunteers. She reads the bingo numbers at the McDonald's Center every week. Oh, and, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's she so great. She really loves getting out in the community and helping. Okay, well, before we run out of time, what what one thing should we should we take away from this uh, that we should know about about uh, people with these disabilities? Well, they have something really important to give our world. Our world has been so focused on producing, on getting as far as we can, as fast as we can, and people with disabilities have a joy and a spontaneity that can really help us in our community, in our society, if we'll just stop and listen. So we can learn a lot. A lot we from can. Them. That's Indeed. beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here, Tamara. Oh, I'm really happy to hear about this. It's, oh. it's a wonderful organization. I so appreciate you having me on Thank the show. You. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for watching this. I'm so glad you got to hear about Lars Portland. Um, it, it warms my heart, so I hope it does for you too. And if you want to help support, you can go get your Christmas tree at uh, either in Montevilla or in Hollywood at, by the grocery outlet. And um, do take a look at their website and find out ways you can get involved. And if not, just at least open your heart to the possibility of, of um, welcoming people with disabilities into your life. Mm. We'll be right back in a few minutes with more of Community Hotline. Community media is to us is literally our lifeline to what's going on in the lives around us. The absolute most important thing that happens in your neighborhood. People's local communities are usually what's most important to them. Because we're the faces, the smiles, the peoples, and the personalities of the community. To not only give people a voice, but to have their voice heard. Local government is a very important part of our daily lives. You might think the decisions that affect us most are made in Washington, D.C., but frequently what happens at the local level has the biggest impact. Safe and clean streets and parks, local ballot measures to ensure funding for police, these are just a few of the issues that matter most. At Metro East, we provide gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of local government so you can see what's happening in your East County cities. Watch city councils, planning commissions, and school boards on these cable channels or online. 